What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to episode 11 of the Rip City Snowhawks. If you missed out on the last episode, I'm going to put this little bit in here to catch you up to where we're at because it's been a little bit. We have breaking news. An immediate in effect report from Commissioner Roger Goodell's office regarding a booming social media campaign started by Johnny Menzel and his agent known as Hashtag us too. The former first round pick and Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel was unsuccessful in landing an opportunity with Rip City last season after the emergence of former XFL MVP PJ Walker. After a barrage of negative tweets throughout the season to the Snowhawks and Walker, Manziel, his agent, and former players who had previously been suspended by the league and unable to land NFL contracts have started the hashtag us too. This campaign was to raise awareness of the NFL denying these players a second chance on the brand new developmental program known as the Snowhawks. In a PR move for the league to try and subdue the social media outcry, Commissioner Goodell has agreed to reinstate three players from the commissioner's exempt list and to let the players showcase their skills in the remaining two preseason games of the season. Also, merch sales for Rip City have been league worst and you would figure bringing in high profile player names to the squad is only going to benefit the league and the team financially. We can tell you right now that the first player to land a two week contract obviously is the face of said social media campaign, Johnny Manziel. The second name confirmed to a two week contract is former first round pick wide receiver Justin Blackman, who is looking to live up to his all world college production and hype now that he is sober and reportedly in the best shape of his life. We end this report by saying we have yet to been able to confirm the identity of the third player reinstated by the league from Commissioner Goodell, but we're told that this will be announced shortly. So yes, we have the new rules that have kind of passed to get into the social media demand, and we have announced two players of the three that we're going to be entering the squad. Uh, first up is Johnny Manziel. He's coming in as a 62 overall quarterback, 6 feet tall, 210, 27 years old, scrambler by nature. Uh, as you can see with his stats, and as I do with all these players, I basically go to the last year that they were in Madden, and I took like 10 away from most of their attributes. Because, you know, that's going to be the regression. A lot of these guys actually were in Madden 16 and Madden 17. So uh, these are the stats for Manziel. I'd be like, if, he, if Johnny Menzel came back in the game, 62 overall is about where he's at. Um, as you can see, you know, good athlete, 82 speed, 8, uh, 89 acceleration at 27. You're not going to really be losing any of those attributes just yet. But, you know, it, it's definitely stiff competition because it is P.J. Walker's job to lose. But we are entering that third preseason game. That's where you get three quarters with your starters. And as by rule, Johnny Manziel will be getting said three quarters. They're going to be getting all the opportunities, these three players to make the most of their opportunity, which I guess could put the rest of the guys on the roster at a disadvantage. But that's just the, the ruling that the NFL decided to come. So first up, it was Johnny Menzel. Then at wide receiver, we have Justin Blackman. 6'1", 210, 30 years old, out of Oklahoma State. Uh, on the clean and narrow now. One of the most productive college wide receivers of all time. Maybe one of the most dominant college wide receivers of all time. Uh, he's coming in as a 67 physical style wide receiver. 88 speed, 91 acceleration. Got 86 catching, 80 catching traffic, 81 spec. His release is good, but you can see the route running is not particularly good. That's the area where I took liberties from his rating in Madden 16 because Madden 16 didn't have short, medium, and deep. They just had route running, and his route running was a 75. So I said took away 10 and gave him 65 in all those categories across the board. I feel like a 67 is about fair for a guy of Justin Blackman's caliber that it wasn't injuries or anything like that that hampered his career. It was just substance abuse issues. So it's, you know, if he had a guy that had multiple ACL injuries and was trying to make a pushback, yeah, his athletics, his athleticism, his acceleration would be down. But this is a guy that just had to get his mind right. So uh, we got 67 overall. And this is actually a position that we desperately needed wide receivers. I will tell you, for that third and final spot, I was thinking maybe flipping a Higgins or Demarcus Robinson to the Seattle Seahawks to acquire someone like Josh Gordon. I think having a great turnaround for Josh Gordon would be big, but I went through the comments and you guys wanted to leak the information as to what player would be taking that third spot on our, uh, we'll call it NFL Pathways to the NFL program that are getting these guys that were previously on the commissioner exempts list and getting them in. You guys want to see Sean Oakman. He was a popular one, but Sean Oakman was never in the NFL, so he would not you know, fit the rule or, or, or within the, the areas that you need to qualify for the commissioner's exempt list and to get in on this Pathways program. You know a player that was, and he also was heavily rumored in the comments, was Alden Smith. Now, Alden Smith is a machine. You know, you, you know everyone knows he's kind of crazy, right? 
Well, looking at Alden Smith's stats in the NFL, he's like one of the biggest what-ifs, I think, in this position. Because Alden Smith essentially played in two seasons. He had two full seasons where he was a starter. And in 2011, when he was a rookie, kind of actually a surprise pick out of Missouri, as a rookie for the 49ers, he had 14 sacks, 27 quarterback hits, and 13 TFLs. In his sophomore year, 2012, he was first team all pro. He had 19 and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, 18 TFLs, and 29 quarterback hits. He was the most dominant edge rusher, young edge rusher in the National Football League. So he's coming in as a 71 overall defensive end. He could play 3-4 outside linebacker, but he fits our scheme. And again, we took the liberties of everything outside of speed, acceleration, strength, and agility. We get a minus 10 from the last year he was in the game. I think it was actually Madden 17. He was a member of the Raiders roster. He was so good that he was like out of Madden, out of the NFL for two years from 2014, uh, 2015, 2016, and 2017. He was out for two years. He still came back in as an 85 overall. So that is how dominant he is. And uh, we're excited to see if he can make the most of his second opportunity. All these guys, they do not have guaranteed roster spots. Alden Smith, Justin Blackman, and Johnny Manziel. Um, probably Blackman and Alden Smith have a much easier path to making this roster. And I even mean Johnny Manziel could be the backup, but then you're going to make the decision. Is it going to be worth having this much of a headache, or assumed headache, if we give P.J. Walker, and when we most likely give P.J. Walker the starting spot, you're going to have Johnny Manziel you know, chirping, you're probably going to have some tensions within the locker room. We are going to have to be blown away by Johnny Manziel's performances here. Uh, in the th last two preseason games, he obviously he's going to have a big show in here. Week 3 against the Minnesota Vikings, and they're going to have their last chance to make an impression. Week 4 against the 49ers to see if they are going to be good enough to make this roster. Because it's not just about who we have on the roster. It's about who we have on the roster now, who's good enough right now to make the team. But also, between that Week 4 final preseason game against the Niners and that Week 1 regular season game against the Ravens, that's when we're going to be able to go in and grab some free agents. Grab whatever free agents were, were deemed unwanted by the NFL. I'm seeing John Ross. I'm liking that. I'm seeing someone like Randy Gregory, who's definitely going to be a top candidate for a, a career turnaround. David Johnson's there. Like, there are sensational names like that we're going to want to bring in and try and improve, improve this team. Taco Charlton, another guy looking for a second chance. So, really, a lot of people in a normal scenario... You're using the preseason games to make the roster. In this game, you're essentially making your preseason games to just hopefully get another chance to make the roster before we start looking at the available free agents. So without further ado, let's get into this third preseason game against the Minnesota Vikings with Johnny Menzel as our starter. Third and six, first attempt for Menzel. We start the drive out with two runs. Let's see what we can do here. How does he feel like in the pocket? Boom, top of the route, and it's almost picked off by Eric Kendricks. All right, we'll give him something easy. We'll give him something easy to, to you know, edge his way in here. A nice slant. Come on, get a completion. Get a completion. Stands in the pocket way too long. Tries to use his scrambling ability that he used to do at Texas A&M, but you're almost 30, bud. You're not going to be able to do that at your age or at that level of competition in the NFL. Daniil Hunter just embarrasses Johnny Manziel. Oh my god, second and 21, it's Daniil Hunter again! Here we go, James Prochet, nice grab out of the slot. First time you get a big gainer. Now you gotta remember, the Minnesota Vikings, they got Joe Burrow at quarterback. So this is just, you know, it's gotta be a tough game regardless, preseason or not. But uh, I would definitely want to see a little bit of fight of some of these guys. Oh, they got Winfield Jr. playing in the shadows of his dad. Okay, that's, that's an exciting young Vikings team. If we we're gonna take a minute to acknowledge the team on the other sideline. Oh, Justin Blackman, his first grab, breaks a tackle, gets a first down. Okay, give him something easy. Give, you, give him something playable here. We'd love to see Johnny Manziel connect with Justin Blackman or get destroyed for the third time by Daniil Hunter. Okay, hits McCray on the screen pass. Uses that 96 speed to get back to pretty much the line of scrimmage. Fourth and goal. And Johnny Manziel goes against the coach's orders that we're going to kick a field goal. He brushes it off, tries to kick man, and says we're going for it on fourth down. And he gets sacked. That is not going to go over well in the meeting room. Good grab. Oh! 
Oh, Johnny Manziel hit James Prochet. Let's be honest, James Prochet took the slant, did all the work, but it still goes down in the box score as a Johnny Manziel touchdown. Oh, oh, the play action third and goal, Johnny Manziel, the backup tight end, Isaac Anata. Anata's been having a huge preseason here. Pull one back as the starters of this game exit for the backups. Now it's time that a lot of fans are hoping P.J. Walker can come out, get a touchdown or two, and make everyone forget what Johnny Menzel just did. Oh, he's able to hit C.J. Procise out the backfield. Procise hits the juke move, and he gets it up to the two-yard line already. Two for two, 54 yards, P.J. Walker. Best case scenario with bringing Manziel in, I think we're gonna get elevated play from P.J. Walker. It's a fire under his ass. I'm not saying he lost anything. I'm not saying he needed that kick in the ass. He wasn't getting complacent, but now he's forced. Because I don't think anyone thought for one second Kelly Bryant was going to take the starting job from P.J. Walker. But now that you throw in a Johnny Manziel in the mix, let's, let's see if he elevates himself. He rises to the level of competition. Here we go. Scrambles. Gets a rushing touchdown. One thing I can say for sure, watching Manziel play, was the sacks that Daniel Hunter was giving up. I would have expected to make a miss on one or two of those occasions and make a play, an extended play with his feet. Didn't quite get that from him. Second and goal, Scotty Phillips. A drive led by P.J. Walker, able to punch it in in a late fourth quarter lead change for the Portland Snowhawks. All right, third and five. P.J. Walker, if you notice, he only has one legit wide receiver out there in James Prochet. What happens when you're working with the backups? Who, who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? X. And he actually throws it to Prochet. That connection that has been working all of last season, carrying into this season. First down timeout. Oh, it goes to the rookie Peterson. Oh, come on. Fighting in battle. We got no timeouts. This is going to have to be quick. Double slants for the win. And he goes to McCray. McCray! The first undrafted pick, Greg McCray, South, uh, Central Florida. Big time touchdown. We bring out Nerd Alert. Goggles comes out. This should be a fourth quarter come from behind victory. Strong showing from both Johnny Menzel and PJ Walker. You couldn't ask for anything else in a preseason game. We get to spend our XP. But what a performance from both guys. Look at it here. Almost equal. I mean, obviously Manziel played you know, three quarters versus one quarter. But I mean, P.J. Walker was sensational. Both these guys made plays. Big negative would be, I guess, Manziel took a lot of sacks. I don't think we had a single sack for P.J. Walker. Maybe one. And he had a rushing touchdown to go with it. Receiving five catches, 81 yards for Wilson. Prochet, 80 and a tutty. McCray had that game winner. Touchdown for Nata as well. Defensively, Moreland had eight tackles. We had a couple TFLs, of course, passing out, having a big-time performance. All right, man. That's a dub. And that's an impressive showing from everyone involved. Actually, what did Alden Smith do? I didn't see that. What was he able to do? Alden Smith in his first game with the Snowhawks. You know, get a TFL. Two tackles and a TFL. Working his way back. Getting the rust off. Got some money to spend. We got Slim Jimmy trying to make him into a scheme fit slowly, but he's already up to a 73 overall. Uh, look at me at Star Dev. He's one of those guys, man, that I think that's really going to grow here in this NFL developmental program. Same with Tenno Passigno, the TFL machine. Maybe the best run stuffing D tackle in the National Football League entering this season. He's been an absolute animal. Star Dev, everything that you want to see. High level athlete. Sky's the limit. Oh, and he hits Justin Blackman who drops the touchdown. No. Oh, so close. Like, this might be P.J. Walker's only drive of the game. I don't think we're going to get the ball back in the first quarter. Oh, can we go? Justin Blackman, his first touchdown since he's sober. That's awesome. What a moment. Yeesh. Oh, he has him. The backup tight end, Andrew Valert, gets the tutty from Johnny Manziel. If you're keeping score at home, that's one touchdown for P.J. Walker. One touchdown for Manziel. And this one regains the lead as well. 
Oh, go, Johnny, go! Adi fumbles it, but Pro Size is there. Every time Meinzel kind of scrambles, he's fumbled so far. Big red flag. Oh, not good. Not good. Not good. Pick six. It's Tarveris Moore, I think. Yeah. Oh. Okay, don't count. Why is it like the fourth quarter of the preseason almost and Richard Sherman's still in? Okay? Dumb. There we go. Use the speed. Ninety-six of it. Use all ninety-six of that speed. Eighty-six yard touchdown for Manziel. Needed that. Absolutely needed that. Oh, he has him again. Greg McCray, the burner. He's tired. He, that ninety-six speed is dwindling. But Manziel has found himself a safety net in the wide receiver running back hybrid. The weapon at a Central Florida. Here we go, Scotty Phillips. Touchdown, let's go for two. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Let's go slant. I feel like we got this close. It's good, it's fair not to call it a slant. She's Hollywood Higgins out there. That's a good sight to see. But we'll go to Volert, who got the first touchdown of the game, and we're tied up at 35 apiece just under five minutes to go in the fourth quarter of the final preseason game. He's able to hit McCray. Why is Sherman still out there? I do not know, but I'm going to pick on him all day long. He's slow, and McCray doesn't have a lot of ability that we know yet that's untapped, but he's fast. And he's 200 yards today. First and 10 on the 10. A touchdown to tie. We're going heavy tight end set. And we go to Verlaert. Not to actually, Isaac, not. How did he get both feet in? Can we go to the booth, please? No? Okay, sure. I mean, it is the preseason, but I thought that was a touchdown. We'll send Pro Slice on a wheel here. We might actually be able to hit it. Boom. Boom. Now, this is where we're going to go for two. We're going to go for two. Because it's the preseason, and Manziel wants to make an impression. And what better way than to win it in regulation? Drops back. Oh, not a good throw. Okay, let's get a stop here. What do we got? Rector. We'll go. We'll go. Jakai Polite on the edge. Get a stop here. Give the offense at least a couple chances to hoof this into the end zone. Oh, there we go. That's a huge play to start things off to Josh Peterson. Just get out of bounds. Someone get open. Get out of bounds. Oh, my God. We're going to be able to kick a field goal. And we're going to win it, hopefully. Goggles, I don't think we've missed a field goal yet. It's the preseason. Do you think I care one damn bit? Oh, my God. We're going to win it. And somehow Johnny Manziel in the most exciting preseason game you'll ever see in Madden. Johnny Manziel orchestrates a game-winning drive. Sensational performance that did have a pick six, but 44-42, Rip City gets the win. I mean, look at that. P.J. Walker got the start. He was clean. Johnny Manziel, not as clean, but found a way to win like he did time and time again at Texas A&M. Didn't run the ball particularly well. Three fumbles for Manziel. Big red flag there. Uh, receiving, we had eight catches, 208 yards and a touchdown for the rookie Greg McRae, using every bit of that nice six speed. 76 yards and a tutty for Procise. Peterson, Volert, Justin Blackman got that touchdown from P.J. Walker. Just a team effort here, top to bottom. Defensively, Vildor and Kalik Hudson had sensational games. Two TFLs from Alden Smith. We got a sack and a couple of half sacks there. And then, most importantly, three for three on the kicks from Blanket Chip. We get the spend. The last of the XP that earned in the people that 24 points in the fourth quarter. No matter what happened throughout that game from Johnny Menzel, 24 points in the fourth quarter. At worst, I think I can speak for everybody in saying he is making this final 53 for sure. We get to spend some XP. Two of the more notable players, David Reese, now up to a 76 overall. I think our first green player on the defense. 
and you know goggles beautiful let's get uh let's set that what's what's his stats i want just kick power oh let's give him a little bit more kick power if potentially hopefully it's just not one of those awareness ones it is not we get plus one kick accuracy even though we upgraded power but that's still fine for the best kicker in the national football league so here we are we are down to our final 53 but it is now time to look at the free agents that are still available that we could potentially bring in and sign for our team looking at quarterbacks okay josh rosen i definitely think he fits the monster of the team we like to carry three quarterbacks on the roster i think i would rather josh rosen than i would kelly bryant i would like to think for a third quarterback so we'll sign josh rosen but he's clearly going to be quarterback three on the roster i don't care what the rating says your qb3 uh running backs what do we got here oh there's some definitely some talented running backs even though i'm happy really with what we have um you know, definitely some guys that are catching my eye. Justice Hill would be interesting. Bring in maybe a power back like a Gus Edwards. Former Miami Hurricane. Went to Rutgers. But I think right now I'm good with our running backs. You know, I'm not just going to make signings for the sake of making signings. Um, we're good at fullback. Well, we got a wide receiver. We got a slot here in Braxton Berrios. We definitely do need to bring in a wide out. That is for sure. Just from a depth standpoint. So we'll go down here. I don't want to go too much lower in the 60s because we. why would we want to handicap ourselves? We pretty much want to bring in the best player available. Uh, I do like seeing Austin 316, Austin Pro there. I'm not going to make all my signings. I want you guys to see these guys, and maybe you can help me make the decision. Uh, Tyree Cleveland, got some good speed to him. Jeff Thomas, 94 speed. We got uh, ooh, Justin Hill here at a Mount Union, 96 speed. But maybe we get more of a, like, I'd be happy with an Alan Lazard. Big possession guy. We don't really have that at wide receiver. Or a Braxton Berrios. Good slot guy. Uh, tight end. I think we're probably good at tight end. We have maybe one too many. On the offensive line, I will go through and see if we can make some upgrades. There. That's a 66 tackle. He's not really a scheme fit, though. Um, hmm. Cesar Ruiz at center. I already know I want, I'm going to bring him in for one. That's an upgrade, a youth upgrade. Um, good here, guard. We got Martinez Rankin. You know, I, he's probably better than our depth. We'll sign him as well. Defensive end, Chad Thomas. There's some nice looking names here. Deshaun Hall, preseason stud for the Philadelphia Eagles. We got Miles Brown at D tackle, 67. Not really a scheme fit yet. Uh, Dwayne Smoot, DeMarcus. I love DeMarcus Walker at Florida State as much as I can like a Florida State player. We got Christian Miller. Uh, not exactly what we're looking for here at linebacker for depth. Obviously, we want ath athletes. David Long's not a bad athlete of West Virginia. Zaire Franklin. Actually, a real nice skill set between the top two guys there and Jordan Evans and Franklin, even though they're not scheme fits. You get someone like Charles Harris. He could get a second chance former first round pick of the Miami Dolphins, moving to defensive end. Just get a part of that rotation. Surprise, man. Randy, I thought. Randy Gregory. Even though I hate Randy Gregory and I think he's the dumbest player in the NFL, I would have been interested to bring him in on the team. Uh, in the secondary, there's some nice looking Iman Marshall. Isaiah Johnson, 6'2", with 92 speed. Okay, we're definitely going to dip in here at corner, for sure. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get Isaiah Johnson and we'll bring in Iman Marshall. We could also get Needham. He's 24. But definitely want to upgrade our secondary just a little bit. At safety, White Lightning is here. I'm not even going to think twice. We are bringing in White Lightning. Even if it's just in a depth position. He's a Pink Slips legend. Uh, Crookshanks. Man, both Crookshank and Rudy Ford look like nice options at strong safety. Who is the better? Uh, ooh, let's get Crookshank in. Let's see what our roster's... I mean, our roster is going to be full. We're probably going to be, what, 10 spots over? Seven spots over. Obviously, I'll be able to make appropriate cuts. Send some guys to the practice squad. But as we look at our team, at our depth chart, the one position we still want to bring in depth is that wide receiver spot. We only have four wideouts on the roster right now. We need, I would say, at least two more wide receivers. So that is how we're going to end the episode. I want you guys to pick two wide receivers that we could add to the squad out of these names here. I'm obviously they're not going to be starters, but you know I think I think there's some really good options. So let me know in the comment section below. Who you want to see come in at wide receiver to finish out our two spots that I look to improve our squad. But that's going to do it for me today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy the episode. I will state, so there's no controversy, that our starting quarterback week one will be 
PJ Walker. And we're going to have Manziel there. And Rosen, we're going to cut Kelly Bryant. Clearly, goodbye. Thank you very much. Or maybe we can toss him on the practice squad. But PJ Walker will be our setter. But impressive showings from both him and Johnny Manziel. It's going to be very exciting to see where that goes. And you also get a guy like Josh Rosen. He'll be a perfect candidate if both these guys struggle at some point during the season. I'm glad that we have him on the roster as an emergency option. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me here today. Thank you for watching. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping You talking that shit, when you talking and talking Look at my options, look at me dropping Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never I'm way too clever Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent, I'm doing it big Way too persistent on taking your bitch Here comes a monster, scared